Brandon Short, one of the great players in uh, Penn State history, part of that linebacker tradition. First time I ran into Brandon, he and uh, another future teammate of his, it was McKeesport High School in Altoona. You guys in the gold, you know, goal to go, man, met a head on. <laughs> and the 1997 game is one of my favorites in the Ohio State Penn State series. You went out. For one play, Pepe Pearson win, and Ohio State's up 27-17. Harris hits the big run, and Ohio native Curtis Enos grinds it out, and Penn State wins by four here. And one of the really great games played in the series between the Buckeyes and the Nittany Lions, Brandon. Oh, yeah, that's one of my greatest college football memories. You know, it was two of the top teams in the country, as most of the time it is when Penn State and Ohio State meet one another. And, you know, fortunately, you know, we had the firepower to pull it out. Aaron Harris and, and Curtis Enos, who doesn't get enough credit for being as good as he was when he was here, um, won the football game for us. Hey, your career. Y'all know you play with a few different teams. Where are you right now, Brandon? Are you thinking about playing anymore? Are you doing anything a little different? I mean, I know you finished up with the Giants. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking about going back at it? Because you look good. Well, I'm, I'm leaving the door open to, to, to playing again. You know, it, it, my agent contacts me, and, and it's a, or the right situation. There's no question I would go out and play again. But right now I'm looking. I'm going back to get my MBA. I'm doing some work with Bank of America. I have some things going on off the field that I'm excited about. But, you know, I love to play the game of football, and I'm, I'm a football player. <laughs> now, t tell me, are you still training as you, you know, exploring all these other options as far as with Bank of America? Are you still training just in case you get that call? Because the game of football in the NFL, there's always a lot of injuries, mm -hmm. and, it, you know, they need to plug a guy in there. If you're staying in shape, you know, you can be that guy. So is that what you're doing? Absolutely. I mean, you, you, you have to stay in shape. I mean, the game is so competitive. And, and as you said, and as you know personally, that, that people get hurt every week in the NFL. And when the, when the phone rings, you have to be prepared to play. So you have to continue to work. You know, it's difficult when you're not doing it on a day-to-day -day basis, act, actually being there, reading coverages, blitzing, going through the work. But, you know, you have to be prepared. Yeah. I think, Brandon, too, the thing that makes this current core very special is, that, you know, it's all about third down in the money league in the National Football League and being able to stay on the field for third down. The one thing about Penn State's guys right now, Dan Connor, I think, made the right decision maybe to come back and finish out a senior year. These guys are on the field at all time and make, a, make all the different plays at all the different angles you need to. That's what differentiates you as a linebacker in the NFL is your ability to, to play the pass, your ability to cover. If you've made it to the NFL, obviously you have some toughness. You have toughness to be able to fill the run. But what makes these guys special, Dan Connor gets a, gets a lot of publicity. Sean Lee, also another great linebacker here at Penn State, you know, that they can actually cover the pass. I watch them in their technique, and they look a lot better than, than, than some of the old guys, including myself, did at that time as far as their technique and pass coverage. And here's one of the most underrated players in the country. It really could be a national coming out party with a national TV audience. There's nothing like the eye that's on you, you know, put up, put up or shut up, right? Absolutely. This is the, I mean, you're, you're, we're at home. We're playing against the number one team in America. This is linebacker you, and it's an opportunity for the linebackers to shine. And I think that our linebackers are going to go out there and do that today for Penn State. Well, and uh, there's another guy over, you know, on the Ohio State side, Laurinaitis. Do you get fired up if there's, you know, say, hey, that guy's pretty good too on the opponent? to try and outplay them. Absolutely. I mean, if anybody, any, any of these guys up here can tell you as a competitor, you don't want to see another guy at your position outshine you. So when you're going into that game and their, their linebacker over there is supposed to be one of the top guys in the country and you're supposed to be one of the top guys in the country, you got to take it upon yourself to outshine him and help your team win the football game. I think, too, sometimes great football teams, you know, Penn State suffered those two losses earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's, you know, uh, you know, put tape on a helmet and go out, win a job and just kind of get everything back together and try and, you know, they still have a lot to play for this team. You know, I mean, absolutely. With, with college football, you know, there's no real solid number one team. We have the number one team in the country on paper and here today, but there's no completely dominant team here. So if Penn State can win out, they have a, a, a great shot of going to the Rose Bowl because this is the other top team in the conference. Now, do you, do you think that they should come into a playoff system? For, since, as you're saying, on paper, there's there's no, you know, on paper, there is a, a, a number one, but 
every week someone's getting knocked off. Do you mm -hmm. think we should go into a playoff system eventually? <laughs> um, the, the, the playoff system has been something that's been debated for years, and I believe it's something that definitely needs to be instituted, simply because every year you have two or three teams with one or, or, or uh, one loss or that's undefeated. They have an opportunity to be a, the champion. Don't let reporters or don't let coaches decide who's going to be the best team. Let the players decide. And they can easily make a system where every bowl game is, is also a playoff game. They can keep the bowl system intact and then make the top 10 bowls, the, that playoff system, the rest of the bowls, still let the kids go to a bowl game. So the bowls Try not to make too much money. sense now. <laughs> yeah. Sounds <laughs> yeah. well, too much like right. logic change going on. You know, wouldn't that you. be great? What's up? The only thing that hasn't changed at Penn State for so long is Coach Paterno. Yeah. Have you been around all the world playing at different teams and you coach with different guys? Mm -hmm. What's special about Joe compared to these other people? What's special about Joe is that Joe, Joe actually cares about the guys as men, as individuals. If you go to, to other college football programs around the country, they're, they're meat markets. They just churn out. If you're the best player, you get on the field, you play, and you win, and then they don't care anything about you. Joe understands that the, the, the young men that he produces represents this university and represents him, and he's dedicated to putting out a good product. That, and that means if you don't go to class, if you don't go to, if you don't work out, you don't train properly, you don't play, and they don't care who you are. One of the most special uh, players is coming up, uh, Adam Talaferro. Uh, thank you so much, Brandon Short. Appreciate seeing you, and uh, good luck. Hope you get back into the uh, NFL. Thanks for having me, guys.